Hello, kindergarten. In today's lesson, we are going to be drawing a bear. You can draw a teddy bear, or you can draw a real live bear. There are actually eight different species of bear in the wild. Most of them are brown, but sometimes you'll find a white bear or a black bear or a black and white bear like the panda. Today's drawing is going to focus on the face of the bear, the eyes, nose, mouth, and ears. Here are some fun facts about bears that maybe you did not know. Only the polar bear is a true carnivore. All other bears are omnivores, and that means most bears eat plants and meat. Only the polar bear eats meat alone. Did you know bears live as long as 30 years in the wild? A male bear is called a boar or a he-bear, and a female bear is called a sow or a she-bear. I bet you know what a baby bear is called. Think about it. A cub. A bear cub. You're right. Artists use shapes and lines to create art. Today you will use line, shape, color, texture, and pattern in a guided drawing of a bear. Begin by looking for some circles that you can trace. Different size circles, so we can use one for the head, and one for the snout, and perhaps a smaller one for the ear. Start by holding your paper the tall way, and trace your largest circle at the top half of the page. Pause the video after each step so you can catch up on your paper. Now you're going to want to use a smaller circle, maybe the medium-sized circle that you were able to find, and use that to trace the snout. Notice where the snout is. It's very, very low inside the biggest circle, which was the head. Pause now and draw your medium-sized circle exactly where I placed mine. We're now going to continue using circles, smaller circles, for the nose and the eyes. You don't need to trace anything here. You can just draw your own small circles. But notice where they are. The nose is inside the snout, and the eyes are resting just on top of the snout. It's time to use lines. Lines can be used to make the smile. Draw one line coming directly down from the nose, and then turn that line so it curves to the right and it curves to the left, and that will create the mouth. You can use a curved line for both ears, or you could trace part of your small circle tracers that you found earlier. Let's create an inner ear by drawing a curved line inside the ear. Now draw one curved line over each eye. These will be the eyebrows. Because we're focusing on just the face of the bear, you may only have room for some shoulders. Use two curved lines, one for the right shoulder and one for the left shoulder. At this point, you may need to decide if you are drawing a teddy bear or a real live natural bear. The teddy bear could have some clothes, so if you want to put a shirt on your bear or a sweater, you can make up some patterns and put that all over the bottom part of the bear, where the chest, neck, and shoulders would be. Did you know that artists create patterns by repeating shapes, lines, and colors in the same way again and again? You can create pattern now if you would like your bear to be wearing a patterned shirt. If you did not choose to do this, you can just skip this step or watch it, but you don't have to do it on your bear if you're making a wild bear. I'm repeating lines, and here I'm repeating shapes, and I'm repeating them in a way that somebody else could actually finish my pattern for me. If I have heart, 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 you can guess what's going to come next, another heart. So patterns are predictable. 
I made a bunch of stripes on my bare shirt and I'm filling each stripe in with a different pattern. This one is going to be triangles. I'm just creating it with a zigzag line, but it's got a downward triangle next to an upward triangle next to a downward triangle next to an upward triangle. And next, I think I'll just do a bunch of circles that are connected. Now we're going to talk a little bit about texture. Texture is how something feels. It might be rough, bumpy, prickly, jagged, fuzzy and furry, or hard and scaly. We can create texture in our art so that our bear looks like he has fur. Let me show you what I mean. I've outlined my drawing in black so you can see it better. We're going to need a brown crayon to make the fur. So I'm taking the end that's not pointed and tearing off some of the paper. And then I'm going to snap a little piece of my brown crayon off. And that is going to be perfect for making texture. You hold it sideways and press down hard on the entire side of the brown crayon. And it makes this fuzzy, wuzzy texture on the bear's face. It's not liney, it's not scribbly, it's not too dark, but it looks fuzzy. It gives it a soft, fuzzy look. So I'm going to fill in my entire brown bear with fur. If you choose not to make a shirt for your teddy bear, or you choose to do a real life wild bear, you're going to want to color in that shoulder, chest area with fur also because real live bears don't wear clothes. You can use the tip of that crayon to darken in your inner ear. Watch what I do next to my eyes to give them a shiny texture. I'm going to fill them in with black marker and leave a little thin white space for the shine. I've got to do it the same on both eyes. And I think I'll even do that to the nose too. A lot of bears have a wet nose with a shine on it. I'm going to try to make that same effect by letting the white be a highlight on the nose. Now we're ready for some color. If you drew a very complicated pattern on your bear's sweater or shirt, you should use some markers to start coloring in every inch of that material. This may take a while, so we're going to break this lesson into two weeks. Come back next week to watch part two of the video and we will finish coloring in the shirt and creating a colorful background for behind the bear's head. Welcome back to part two of our video. I'm going to use marker to color in my pattern and I'm going to make it predictable also, meaning all of my circles I'm going to make blue. All of my triangles I'm going to make red. And that will make my pattern a very predictable AB pattern. AB, AB, AB. Continue coloring in the rest of the sweater like I just did and now we're ready for the background. We're going to create a pattern in our background too because pattern is part of art. So I'm going to start by doing lines and they can be diagonal or horizontal or vertical. Diagonal lines are slanted lines and that's what I'm starting with. When I run into my bear, I need to pick up my marker and continue on the other side of the bear's head. Now I'm gonna do some horizontal lines in the middle. Pick up the marker, continue. Pick up the marker, continue. Pick up the marker, Continue. Please don't draw on top of your bear with the background. The background's supposed to be behind the bear. And now I'm going to color in my stripes with a pattern of colors that repeat, like um, I'll pick three colors, green, blue, and yellow. And I'm going to do my entire background with green, blue, and yellow and let them repeat over and over again. In this part of the picture, I'm filling in between the black lines with a solid area of color. It may look like I'm coloring very, very quickly, but I've only sped up the video. I'm taking my time and actually coloring quite slowly so I won't get any marker on the bear. 
Now I'm filling in a section with a zigzag lines. Between every black line, I'm going to make a zigzag line that's either blue, yellow, or green. And now I'm doing swirly lines. In between the black stripes, I'm gonna use green, yellow, and blue swirly lines, or curly lines. Now I've gotta fill in the ones that I've missed. And I'll go back down here and continue filling in some solid areas. And then I think I'm finished. As soon as you're finished coloring in your bear, please take a photo of it and send your picture to me.